You're listening to Shalise's Podcast. I'm excited about today's topic. We are going to jump in with some prayer and get this party started. All right, here we go. Father, thank you for today's hot topic on the broadcast. Thank you that this is a topic that is near and dear to your heart. It's all about the money. Yeah, it's all about you showing us the money. But Father, seriously, I am so grateful for this opportunity to talk to your favorite kids today about the way that you think about our finances and that it is completely different than the way that most of us have been taught and the way that we have thought. Thank you that the gospel is so much more abundant than we can even wrap our heads around. But I thank you that we have the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit is the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of you and that he is our helper and he is here to take what belongs to Jesus, what belongs to us through our union with Jesus and show it to us. So we just rely on you, Holy Spirit. Thank you for blowing our minds today. Thank you for renewing our minds. Thank you for sweeping out the mind trash that we all carry around about finances, about money, about cold, hard cash. Thank you that it is not a dirty word, that money is not a dirty word, no matter what we've been taught, and that you care. You care about the details of our lives. You are here to... uh, help us experience the abundant life that Jesus died for us to experience. So we just rely on you, take us where we need to go and lead the way, Holy Spirit, into the truth that sets us free. In Jesus name. Amen, amen, amen. Well, this is a definitely a hot topic and it's actually one of my favorite topics to uh talk about. And it's one of the topics that sometimes is not so popular to talk about in Christian circles. It can feel like a private talk or a private topic, and it can carry a lot of shame around it when we start talking about money. Uh, There's all kinds of judgments that we have as uh, human beings around this topic. And so I might be a little strange in the fact that I love to talk about it so much, but because I... I'm here on the planet to help people experience the fullness of who they are in Christ and to help people experience the abundance that belongs to them in Christ. This absolutely is one of my top, my, my favorite topics to talk about uh, because it's going to take some money, some M O N E Y for you to fulfill your purpose. You know, God's vision for your life is bigger and greater than you can afford. And Jesus came to set us free from poverty. He came to preach good news to the poor and good news to a poor person is that you are not poor anymore. And Our abundance in Christ is a part of our inheritance that is is a part of our union with Jesus. And so as I approach this topic today, I'm going to approach it probably from a very different perspective than you have heard before, because if you listen to me for more than five minutes, you know that everything that I talk about, everything that I teach is taught through the lens of the finished work of Jesus and our union with Christ. And so finances, like every Everything else in the world is a completely different uh, thing when we look at it through the lens of what Jesus has accomplished. So the first thing I want to hop off on today is I want to just make you aware, if you are not, that we all have been programmed with what I call a money blueprint. Okay, and what I mean by a money blueprint is that we all have a framework or a paradigm around money and around the topic of finances. And we got this paradigm and we got this programming really from a lot of different places, but the first place that we got it from is our family of origin. And so all of us grew up in families uh, or in circumstances, if for some reason you didn't have a family, that uh, taught us what to think about money. 
We observed people in our lives. We observed our parents. We observed uh, the socioeconomic uh, status of the, the place that we lived. We, we grew up in certain neighborhoods. And as a result, we just by default picked up ideas about money. And we also, if we grew up in church, we picked up ideas about money from church, from Christian teachings. And so all of us have this money story, if you will, that has shaped and framed the way that we think about money, the way that we think about finances. And most of us are not even aware of that programming a lot of the times. We, um, we a lot of times don't recognize that we are operating out of a paradigm or operating out of a story about money that absolutely is contrary. In fact, it can be anti-Christ. When I say that, it is anti the gospel. It is anti what Jesus has accomplished. And so my first thought that I want to kind of communicate to you today is that one of the first steps in uh, increasing your abundance uh, mentality and overcoming the poverty mentality is recognizing that you have it <laughs> and recognizing that there has been programming that has been put into side of your head uh, really without you necessarily being aware of it. You know, in my own life, um, both of my parents grew up in abject poverty. Both of them grew up in circumstances where a lot of times they did not know where their next meal was coming from. They did not know how they were going to get their basic needs met. And so it impacted their beliefs about money, right? I mean, my mom and dad both worked. We came from, you know, my mom and dad worked hard for everything that they had. And, you know, they both operated out of what I would kind of say a default thought that we're never going to have enough money. Right. And so that infiltrated their behaviors, it infiltrated the way that we made decisions, and it infiltrated a lot of things in our lives. It infiltrated the way they, the way that they um, related to what was possible in our lives. And so all of us have that. Okay. That's kind of my story. But just because that was the environment that I was raised in doesn't mean that it's true. It doesn't mean that it's true from God's perspective. And so that's my first point is that I want you just to begin to think about or recognize that you have a money blueprint that's already been programmed into you. You have a paradigm, you have beliefs about money that frankly need to be renewed because the way that God thinks about money and the way that God thinks about abundance is completely different than most of our parents. Our, our, we have a, a, a wide gap to close between the way that we think currently, the way that we have been programmed, and the way that God thinks about finances. Okay, now, um, I also kind of want to lay the foundation on a second point, okay, because here's the truth about pretty much all of our money stories is that regardless of how they got imprinted into us, regardless of how we got programmed with these beliefs, it is true that all of us, for the most part, were taught about money from people who were not established in the their union with Jesus, who were not established in their uh, understanding of the gospel from a perspective of what Jesus has accomplished. And the truth of what Jesus has accomplished is that on the Christ of cross, cross of Christ, he annihilated separation from God. And we were crucified with him and through our co-identification with him, we were buried with him, we were raised with him, and we ascended with him so that now we sit in heavenly places inside of Christ. And so our new identity as, uh, as, as someone who lives in union with Jesus totally changes what is true about everything in our lives, including our finances. Okay, scriptures and Romans talk about the fact that we are joint heirs with Jesus. We are taught that we are the bride of Christ. And what a joint heir and this union you know, reality means as the bride of Christ is that everything that Jesus owns, we now have access to. We now own with him. Why? Because we're one. 
And so I just want to point out that however you were raised, whatever messages you heard from your family of origin or where, you know, from, from church or whatever, you just need to recognize that everything has really been filtered through a lens of separation from Christ. And so what this results in is us getting hooked up to two systems. Okay, we get hooked up first of all to if you grew up in church, you're going to get hooked up to a religious system. And if you just, you know, if you're alive, you grew up getting hooked up to the world system. And both the religious system and the world system are based on the illusion and the deception of separation from God. In fact, the real definition of religion is separation from God. Because if you separate from God and you don't live in union, now all of a sudden, Sudden, you are going to be operating independent from God. And in the world system, what we're taught is that we provide for ourselves, right? So we have this independent thought process about being our own source. And so therefore we operate in the world system independent from God to provide for our own provision. Okay. Now in the religious system, this separation from God shows up a little differently. In the religious system, the separation from God shows up in religious activity and performing to get something from God. So that can look like, you know, good behavior, doing, you know, reading your Bible, going to Christian activities. But in the area of finances, okay, it's going to look like things like we're taught things like tithing. We're taught things like you give in order to get. And it's all of these activities that we do in order to receive God's blessings, right? And all of those activities are things that we must do in addition to what Jesus has already accomplished. And the primary problem with this is that it's all independent. We aren't in Christ operating it from a place of abiding, following the Holy Spirit, seeing what the Father is doing, doing that, and then from that place, living supernaturally and enjoying our inheritance in Christ and watching the Father supernaturally provide for us as we simply obey and do whatever it is that he is doing. You know, scriptures like Matthew 6, you know, talk about seeking first the kingdom. And when we seek first the kingdom, all the other things that we need are are supernaturally provided. Why? Because we are seeking and we are following God's kingdom agenda. We are in the Father's business, a part of expanding his kingdom, expanding a heaven on earth. And as a result, God, we're on, we're in, we're in partnership. We're in union with the Father. We're operating as one with the Father. And he finances his business. Okay. I heard someone say recently that it's, it's God's will. It's God's bill. And I really like that phrase because that's the truth. And so beloved, the process of mind renewal that I want to kind of invite you into in today's broadcast is that we have to completely eradicate this money blueprint that was programmed into us by the world system, by a religious system, by people who also were not living in union with Jesus and did not understand that um, abundant life is what we experience through our union with God, through our union with Jesus. Okay, so let me take you to a couple of scriptures just to kind of, I don't know, found us in the, the scriptures today. Okay, the first one that I want to go to is a scripture from 2 Corinthians 8, 9 that talks about the redemption work of Jesus from a really a, a money perspective or from a, a poverty perspective. Okay, there's lots of scriptures in the New Testament that describe the redemption of Jesus. Okay, it talks about our deliverance from sin. It talks about Jesus becoming the curse. It talks about um, that by his stripes we're healed, that divine health is a part of the redemption of Jesus, that, that the curse was reversed through the redemptive act of Jesus dying as humanity on the cross. But this particular scripture in 2 Corinthians 8, 9 talks about the redemptive work of Jesus from a poverty perspective. Okay, and I'm going to read it to you in the Passion Translation. And here's what it says. In verse 9, it says, For you have experienced the extravagant grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that although he was infinitely rich, 
He impoverished himself for our sake so that, the, so that by his poverty, we become rich beyond measure. Okay, this, this redemptive language that the Apostle Paul is using in this scripture is the idea of a substitute, right? And this substitution that Jesus uh, undertook for us through uh, the cross and through his redemptive work is is evident throughout the epistles okay in uh, 2 Corinthians 5:21 it talks about how he was the sin substitute that he was made to be sin who knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of God in Christ and so there was this substitution in effect where Jesus took on our nature. He took on our separation from God. He took on our sin. And through that substitution, we now take on his righteousness. Okay, and so there's a substitution that happens on the cross. And so in this particular scripture, what, what is being laid out for us is that Jesus also not only became sin, but he became poverty. All right, in, in um, I think it's Second Peter, to 24 it talks about through by his stripes we are healed that that there's many places that it talks about he he took our grief he took our our infirmity he took, he became our sickness and through him taking that he be substituting he became a substitute for us so that we might be healed so that we would live and operate in divine health apart from the cross and so this scripture is just another look at that substitutionary work work of Jesus, but it's from the curse of poverty, not from the curse of sin, not from the curse of sickness, but from the curse of poverty. And the truth of the matter is, is that through your union with Jesus as a joint heir, you now enjoy Jesus's abundance, the Father's abundance, heaven's abundance. It is an inheritance because God does not have poverty. Heaven is a place of abundance. The kingdom of heaven is a place where poverty is illegal. Okay, now if I just go to a couple of other places, I teach about, I teach on this scripture a lot, but it's worth mentioning within the context of this conversation. And it's in first, uh, I'm sorry, it's in Ephesians chapter one, and it's in verse three, and here's what it says in the Passion Translation. It says, every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realm has already been lavished upon us as a love gift from our wonderful heavenly father, the father of our Lord Jesus, all because he sees us wrapped into Christ. This is why we celebrate him with all of our hearts. And so this scripture is literally telling us that everything that heaven contains has already been lavished upon us. I think the confusion for most people is that this is an invisible kingdom. This is an invisible inheritance. Heaven is a reality that lives inside of us. Heaven is here right now. It's not something that we have to die to experience, but it is something that we have to awaken to that, that it is a invisible reality. We have to use our spiritual eyes, our eyes of faith, and we have to come into that place of union with Jesus seated, seated in heavenly places so that we can rule and reign with him in this invisible reality so that it becomes a material reality in our lives. So it's not enough that we have this, you know, invisible abundance, right? We, it has to become manifest. And as the body of Christ, we are here in the material realm. The head is in the invisible realm. Jesus is in the invisible realm, but we are the manifested reality of Jesus Christ in the earth. We are the material representation of Jesus. And so guess what? In this material realm, we need materialized uh, blessing. We need materialized inheritance. We need some cold, hard cash to expand the kingdom and take what is true in heaven and make it true on the earth. We are here to manifest the goodness of God and prove through our lives and through our obedience to what the Father has called us to do and through our leading of the Holy Spirit, we are here to be a pipeline of heaven and meet people's needs, meet the the cry of humanity's heart through the abundance that is in Christ Jesus. And so 
we are the conduit for the manifestation of heaven on the earth. Now, I'm saying a whole lot here, but this is all good stuff. Amen? Now, I want to take you to a couple of other places that it talks about this. I and mean, this is this really, this message is perfect for a follow-up to the message that I taught on on the last broadcast, which was all about God's grace. Because really, God's grace is... It says it's extravagant grace, right, in, in the scripture that we read in 2 Corinthians. God's extravagant grace has provided all of this. This is something that he did apart from our participation, apart from our our even um, decision. I mean, the cross and Jesus undoing the curse, that He, you know, the undoing of Adam was done independent from anything that we did or didn't do. He did this by his grace. Okay, let me take you to a couple of other scriptures here that talk about um, abundance from the place of grace and from the place of us receiving that through our relationship and our union with Jesus. Okay, this is just letting you know that it is God's will that you live abundantly. You know, it's the thief that comes to still kill and destroy, it says in John 10, 10. And it says that Jesus came that we might experience, that we might have abundant life. And abundant life includes abundant material possessions. Why? Because we have work to do. Okay, I am not talking about, you know, the love of money which is the root of all evil. Money is not evil, but making money your source, making money your primary focus, where it's an idol in your life, that is absolutely the root of evil. And why is the love of money the root of evil? Because it's operating out of an independent spirit. It's operating out of the spirit of Satan where we are operating in providing for ourselves and putting our trust in money, putting our trust in our ability to take care of ourselves, which at its root is independence. Okay, so independence is the problem. Money is not the problem. Independence is the problem. Toiling, striving, uh, putting money and your trust in money, that is the problem. But when we step into union with Jesus and we, we operate in the grace of God and we operate from a place of inheritance that we did not earn, abundance is our kingdom birthright. Okay, so here's a couple of scriptures that talk about this. Okay, Third John 2 is a very you know popular scripture. And this really points out the fact that the real problem is what we think about money. The real problem is that we are not thinking the way God does about money, about the kingdom, about who we are, about our union, about the gospel. And so therefore we have a poverty mentality. And here in Third John 2, here's what it says. It says, beloved friend, I pray that you are prospering in every way and that you continually enjoy good health just as your soul is prospering. You guys, this is such a powerful, powerful scripture because it links the experience that we have in the area of our finances and prospering in life, in our health, to the way that we think. That true prosperity is channeled through our soul. It's channeled through our mindset. It's channeled through our paradigm. It's channeled through the things that we believe and not just the things that we consciously agree and think that we believe, you know, uh, the things that we say we believe, but it's the things that we subconsciously actually believe. And that what we believe will determine the level of, of prosperity we have in our life, in both our bodies and in uh, the area of our finances. So this mind renewal, so and this this healing, frankly, of separation from Jesus is absolutely crucial, so that we can get into union with God into union with Jesus, experience union, hear the voice of God, begin to seek the kingdom first, and watch God supernaturally provide for the vision that he has given us as an assignment while we're on this planet, and and, and work with him, let him work through us to glorify himself, glorify what Jesus has accomplished, to bless, to bless those who have yet to know who they are, to demonstrate that heaven is real, to 
demonstrate that Jesus is who he says he is in tangible ways so that people can grab it. But all of this comes through the way that we think, okay? Our poverty thinking is keeping us in poverty. Our independent thinking is keeping us in striving. It's keeping us in, in not being able to trust God, to, to work for something that God has already provided in Christ. And so this shift in our thinking, this shift in our paradigm is crucial. It is absolutely crucial if we are going to be able to live the abundant life that Jesus has provided. You guys, I wish that I could say that this message that I'm teaching right now is the predominant message that people hear in church. Unfortunately, it is not today. Today, we hear things about, you know, messages about stewarding your money. We hear messages about sowing and reaping. We hear all kinds of messages. We are a part of a religious system. It is not a temple-based system like it was back in the Old Covenant or in the day of Jesus. We're not sacrificing animals in order to be blessed by God and deal with our sins, but we are doing religious, cal 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 I can't talk, we're doing religious activities, let me just say it that way, where where we are working. We're working. If we're not working for our own provision, we're working to please God. We're working to get blessed from God. And we, we say that these things are operating by, that we're operating by faith, but truly we're operating out of independence. We're operating out of the very nature of Satan, out of the very nature of the Antichrist, you guys, because his nature is independence. Independence and separation from God is what happened at the fall. It is the root of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, and it is the root of sin. It is the root of pride. It is the root of the love of money. And so we do not even recognize that what we're doing. And so this paradigm shift is imperative. It is absolutely imperative that we renew our minds, that we not just consciously agree with it, but we work to get into our subconscious minds. We work to uproot the unbelief that has been programmed into us so that I'm telling you, when you believe like Jesus, when you operate with the mind of Christ, abundance just shows up. And when it just, it's just like in Matthew 6, 33, seek first the kingdom and all these other things will be added unto you. It's like the blessing of God just overtakes you. Now, granted, you absolutely are there on purpose. You're fulfilling your purpose. You're going after your purpose because no soldier, the scriptures say, goes to war at their own expense. It's like, it's like expecting to, in, you know, enlist in the military and then somehow you've got to finance the, 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 the military advancing operation. It's just ludicrous. The truth is, is that we are advancing the kingdom. We are here on a mission and we are here. We are the violent ones that are taking it by force. We are transforming the earth. We are uh, undoing the curse in the, in the natural realm. We are fulfilling the original demand, uh, dominion mandate that was originally given to Adam and Eve. And we're doing that through our union with Jesus as he is the head. We are his body. He is our, he, we are his bride and we are operating from a place of oneness with him. Now, I want to talk about, um, this mind renewal process because this is, imperative, right? This is really the foundation of everything that I do. It is the foundation of the call of God on my life. Why? Because the call of God on my life is to transfigure the body of Christ. It is to absolutely get the body of Christ so that Jesus, the resurrected Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ is expressed through them in its fullness. And the beautiful thing about transfiguration, you know, the Bible will translate it as transformation a lot of times. Like Roman 12, 2, it says, you know, don't be conformed to the pattern of this world, but be transformed, be transfigured by the renewing of your mind. What that means is, is that the experience of the glory of God happens when we renew our minds. And the foundation of what I'm here to do is facilitate that process so that you can be transfigured and your experience of God, your experience of yourself, your experience of what is possible is completely transformed so that you live supernaturally, so that you fulfill your destiny and that everything that you need is showing up like the ram in the bush for Abraham. As you obey, as you seek God's will, as you see what the father is doing and you see simply get into the flow of that, well, guess what? Signs and wonders follow you. 
That is, that is a huge, huge deal. And that's what I'm here to do. And so I have been a student of the mind renewal uh, process that the Holy Spirit takes us through. I mean, at this point, decades. Why? Because I had a lot of mind trash to take out. Okay. I, I really had to completely, you know, delete so many programs. I mean, I grew up in the Bible Belt. I already told you. I'm ado- I mean, if you haven't heard, I'm adopted. I had three dads by the time I was three. I mean, I had, I mean, just so much trauma. I mean, I, I don't even want to go into my whole story right now just to save time. But I'm telling you, by the time I was in my 20s, I was a mess. I was a mess. And so the Holy Spirit has has led me into really a recovery process, a mind renewal process, a healing process so that I could absolutely begin to agree at a subconscious level with the reality that I am one with God. I remember years ago, the Holy Spirit gave me this word. He says, you need to integrate with Jesus at a subconscious level. I was like, whoa, what does that even mean? You know, I I could kind of theoretically understand what it meant, but I just didn't even really grasp it. And so the Holy Spirit has been taking me on this journey of truly becoming integrated at a subconscious level now for many, many, many years. And in the process, he's taught me so much. He's taught me about the way God created our brains to work, the way that beliefs are imprinted onto us, uh, into us over the course of our lifetime. He's taught me, you know, that strongholds are literal neural nets in our brain, that the programming of, of our, our brain is, is in our physiology, that it's physical, it's a part of our body. He's taught me the relationship between emotions and beliefs, and he's taught me the, 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 the relationship between the mind, the body, and the spirit, and how disease manifests in our bodies because of our subconscious thinking, and, and just how our entire reality is, a, is, a, is influenced, and our, our perception and the lenses that we view the world through are filtered through our belief systems and our neural nets. And I I mean, I don't even have time. I mean, this has been decades of of experience that the Holy Spirit has brought me through so that I can not only myself be transfigured and, and begin to operate and experience the gospel as a material reality in my life, as a way of being in my life, but also to help as many people as possible in my limited time here on the earth. Um, and so what I want to say about that is, you know, I started today's broadcast with, you know, this this uh, reality that we have a money story, we have a money blueprint, we have a paradigm about money, and that that is a subconscious paradigm, and it's given us filters. It's it it is it is um, controlling our perception. It, it it actually what that means is that. Any information that we perceive with our five physical senses is being filtered through our belief system. It's being interpreted through our paradigm. And so what happens with that interpretation is that that paradigm and that lens is creating meaning for us. All right. It is how we interpret the world. It's how we decide what what things mean when they happen to us, when we see anything, the meaning assigned to that is is assigned through our filter and through our paradigm. And so, for example, when you receive an unexpected bill, okay, your five physical senses, take that information in, filter it through the paradigm of your beliefs, and you make it mean something. You make it mean something like, oh my gosh, I'm never going to be able to pay this. I don't know how this is going to be paid. Now I got to get a second job. I mean, I don't know what it means for you particularly because I don't know your paradigm, but I can promise you that everything that you're experiencing in your life is getting filtered through your paradigm. It's getting filtered through your neural pathways and through your neural nets and meaning is being established. Frankly, this is what the fall caused because we have the tree of the knowledge of good and evil programmed into the way that we process everything now. The mind of Christ operates independent from this, but the mind renewal process is renewing our paradigm, renewing our neural nets, so that the mind of Christ is now how we are programmed. Because once we are programmed and in agreement with God, it's called believing. (laughs) And when we believe, things open up in a completely different way. We experience a completely different reality of living. It's why Jesus said all things become possible when we believe. So 
I know I've said a lot here, and this again is not a message that we hear often, right? What we hear is give. And you, and you, and it, you know, give and it will be given unto you. Press down, shaking together, you know, running over shall men give unto your bosom. And I'm not saying that that is a wrong uh, way to look at things. But if you're giving independent from God, if you're giving in order to get something from God, if this is an independent act that you're doing, then it is out of a source that is not the Holy Spirit. It's out of a source. You're, you're operating independent from union. You know, Jesus did what the Father was doing. Was he generous? Yes. Did he provide for people? Yes. But he didn't do anything in and of himself. He said, of my own self, I can do nothing. As I hear, I judge, and my judgment is just. Meaning my perception and the way things, you know, are processed and my interpretation of things is right. Why? Because I don't seek my own will, but the will of the one that sent me, the will of my Father. So Jesus was operating in a a completely integrated identity. He understood that he was one with the Father. And so he was operating out of union. And everything, it, you do the same activities, you know, in some, in, in some sense. I mean, you still give, you still, you know, read scripture, you still pray, you still do all the things that we do in church and in Christian life, but you do it from a completely different paradigm, a completely different lens, and a completely different experience of life. So how this all relates to money is that we have to partner with the Holy Spirit to renew our money blueprint. We have to begin to think like God about money. You know, and in this process in my own life, what it's really looked like is it's looked like taking ownership of what it means to be a joint heir with Jesus. And, and the father has challenged me with this. I mean, he's taken me to different scriptures, like the one in Haggai that says the silver is mine, the gold is mine. And he would just simply teach me. He'd ask me questions. So what does that mean for you? If the silver is mine and the gold is mine, what does that mean for you? Hebrews chapter one, verse three, if, if Jesus is the lawful owner of all things, Shalise, if you're in union with him, what does that mean for you? And so he just began to unionize my understanding of my identity and what that meant as, a, as an heir, right? And then the second phase of this, which, you know, is my process, but it's the process I lead my students through, is that he's begun to unionize my past. He's begun to take me back to the places of trauma in my life, places where I believed and was imprinted with an identity that was separate, with, with programming that was independent based and and caused me to have a self image that was independent from Christ caused me to to behave in ways that were independent from Christ caused me to cope with things in ways that were independent from Christ and interpret things that were in ways that were independent from Christ he's began to take me back to those experiences and really preach the gospel to my to my past self <laughs> really come back to those places of trauma and let that part of me know that you are all you've always been in Christ and oh by the way every everything that happened happened because people didn't know who they were no one was living in, in, in Jesus your parents weren't operating out of union with Jesus and so they didn't understand how to how to think about money they didn't know how to they didn't even know how to teach you about the truth about these things because they didn't know it themselves and so it's just completely radically changed I mean, everything, everything in my life. And not only me, but of course, all of the other people that are on this journey with me, uh, people that are listening to my podcast, people that are going through Emerge, people, I mean, this is, this is a radical revolution of your life. And so beloved, the best advice that I can give you is that, and the best counsel that I can give you is that your investment in mind renewal, your investment with the Holy Spirit in in integrating with Jesus at a subconscious level and uprooting the, the paradigm and the, and the unbelief and the strongholds and the really transforming your thinking is, is, is literally the number one priority. It's actually everything that's left to do uh, now that we're believers, right? The only thing left to do is, is repent. And what I mean by repent is I mean truly change our minds through partnership with the Jesus, Jesus in the Holy Spirit, again, in union with him by the grace of God. Not, not something we do on our own, but it's a process. It's, 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 a, it's a relationship that we have with, with the Holy Spirit who leads and guides us into all truth. 
And the good news is that there is such a thing as supernatural mind renewal. And it's it's what we do in the, the rapid mind renewal sessions that we do here um, in my company. It is, it is a huge part of the work that we do in my school. And it is incredible to watch what God can, what, what Holy Spirit can do in an instant with our subconscious thinking. So I think today, you know, really what I want you to walk away with, I mean, there's so much, right? Because, you know, I didn't, I come at this from such a completely different paradigm, from such a completely different lens. It's like, it just unravels the whole thing. You know, it's not about money being evil. You know, it's not about, is money wrong? Is having money wrong? It's, you know, all of these things that we believe or have been taught or think are the point, right? The real point are, is this, we live in union with Jesus and we think independently. And that lens is, 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 is perpetuating. I mean, it's, it's propagating every, every thing we do. So, you know, as you, you know, absorb the things that I've talked about in today's broadcast and you re-listen to this broadcast, you know, my, my belief about all of this is that there is an awakening that's happening right now, that you are awakening to the paradigm of separation from God at a whole new level. And that as you awaken to that paradigm and you are able to step into a a place of union with Jesus, that you are going to begin to see the whole issue of abundance, the whole issue of money, the whole issue of giving. Everything is going to be transformed because of that simple repentance, that simple shift in your thinking. And as always, you know, we are here to serve you. So, you know, scheduling rapid mind renewal sessions with our team is always an option for you. And Mercy will put the link that you can do that here in the comments. Um, in the broadcast, but you can also um, just reach out to us at info at and we will absolutely get you connected to our facilitators that do those sessions. Also, if you have been thinking about doing Emerge School of Transformation and really stepping into the fullness of your union with Jesus and discovering your purpose, getting on God's agenda to expand the kingdom and what that looks like for you personally, well then I really encourage you to schedule a breakthrough call with us. Uh, the information for that will be um, uh, you know, available here after the podcast. But again, you can always send us an email at info at shalice.com and we'll get you in the right spot. You know, I, I can teach about these things uh, here in the podcast and I will continue to do so. It is a part of the call of God on my life. I love connecting with you guys. I mean, I'm, we're connecting with people all over the world through the podcast and it's amazing. Um, but truly, you know, this is, this is a, uh, this is a commitment, right? It's a commitment to your own partnership with the Holy Spirit to allow him to, to really renew your mind. Uh, because that is where the breakthrough happens. The breakthrough happens as we think and repent and view the world through the lens of union with Jesus and through a lens of the finished work of the cross. So um, really, I think that's everything that I wanted to share today. I know it was a lot. And I know for most folks, this is the first time you probably have ever heard anything like this. So I really encourage you to, you know, definitely listen to the broadcast more than once, uh, put it on repeat, take notes, uh, make it your own message. Um, repetition is one of the ways that our minds is renewed. So as we begin to eat <laughs> a different diet, our brains begin to, to learn those things and uproot the old thinking. Uh, and then also take advantage of the other resources that we have here. And then finally, guys, you know, I know we have a little announcement at the end of the broadcast, but I really encourage you um, just to partner with us, uh, not because you are, you know, trying to get something from God, but this message really does need to get out. This message is, is uh, it's just beyond life transforming. And, it, it, and it's, it's not just about us, meaning it's not just about you and I getting transformed and, and upgrading our money blueprint so that we can experience Jesus, although that would be enough right? But it's really about expanding the kingdom. It's about the people that we are called to serve. It is about loving the world materially and through a demonstration of the cross. And ultimately, all of our purposes are about others. We are here to love and serve every 
person on this planet into the truth of what it means and the reality of the gospel and, and, and life in the kingdom. We are here to build the kingdom. We are here to, to solve poverty. We are here to solve the problems on the planet. And beloved, it takes finances to do that. It takes finances to open some doors. There are some doors. There are some, there is places of influence that yes, God's favor can bring you, but you know, it is, we've got to move beyond existing for a paycheck. We've got to move beyond being a slave to the world system. We have to move beyond just being, you know, consumed with our needs every day because we don't know where the next thing is coming from. We have to get to the place where it's just no longer about our own needs. Right? I mean, there's not even, there's a place you can get where it's just really about being a blessing. It is really about a vision that God has given you and that you are truly here to manifest the Father, that people will look at you and when they've seen you, they've seen the Father because you are one with Him. And it's about living a crucified life where the life that we now live is not not our own, but it is Jesus manifesting himself through us. And so this mind renewal journey is so much bigger than us just personally being released, you know, released from poverty thinking. It's about a move of God that, that that is happening right now on the earth and you have a part to play. Why? Because you're alive. If you are here, you have a, a purpose and you have a place in the move of the Holy Spirit that is happening on the planet right now. So beloved, God bless you. I'm so happy that God's connected us. And I just want to encourage you, you know, make a decision, make a decision that you are going to make mind renewal a top priority, that living your purpose, discovering your purpose is going to be a top priority uh, because it will absolutely not only change you, change your family, change the generational uh you know, destiny of your lineage, but it will absolutely change your, your neighborhood. It will change your community and it can change the world. So God bless you guys. And uh, I'm just going to close in prayer here. So father, thank you so much for every single person that you've led to listen to this podcast, led to listen to this message today. I thank you that this is um, an answer, an answer to the cry of their heart. It is an answer to uh, what they have been seeking. And I thank you, Holy Spirit, that you are going to teach them in the way that it, it, it works for them. Thank you, Holy Spirit, that you are the teacher, that as they absorb this information and, and absorb this revelation, uh, that you are the one that is going to help them assimilate it, help them digest it and help them understand it and make it their own uh, and cause it to be the truth that they know that absolutely sets them free. And, and so we just rely on you, Holy Spirit. I just release every single listener to your capable hands. And I thank you that you will lead them into what's next. You will let them know clearly uh, if there is a deeper connection that they are to have uh, with our school or with these sessions, you're going to make that clear, Father, that they're going to take a step of faith, whatever that looks like. And if it's something else, they're going to take that, that step of faith because we're on your agenda, God. And so we just cancel every agenda, every agenda except for yours. We cancel the plans of man over every single listener. We cancel the plans of the enemy. And Father, we declare that every single person is on your your agenda. Why? Because they listened today and I got to pray that over them. So from this day forward, Father, we declare every other agenda is hereby canceled. So Holy Spirit, give the revelation that's needed. Give the encounters, give the dreams, give the experiences that are needed. Make it clear, confirm things, Father, so that they can come from wherever they are on their journey to the very next step. And thank you, God, that their destiny is abundance. Their destiny is making a difference. Their destiny is manifesting Jesus here on this planet through their union with you. And so, Father, we just release them into that destiny. We, we put them on the path to purpose. We put them in the place, Father, where the transformation is happening by the renewing of their minds. And we thank you for it. We glorify you for it. And we give you every bit of the credit because it is by your grace. It is by your grace. We are what we are. And it is by your grace that we will finish our course. And we thank you for it. We give you glory for it. And we tell you, amen, amen, amen. All right, you guys. Well, this has been an awesome time. I, I really believe that as you continue to absorb the things that we've talked about today, that it is absolutely going to radically shift your life and your destiny. So God bless you guys. Love you. So happy that you are here. Thanks for listening to Shalisa's podcast. 
This recording is, in part, made possible by our listeners. To partner with us, visit Shalice.com, where you can donate and help us spread the good news of our unshakable union with Christ around the globe. You can also find a link there to download Shalice's book, The Path, for free. And if you're ready to discover the call of God on your life and the purpose He created you for, then visit us at Shalice.com and watch Shalice's free training where you'll hear five keys to hearing God about your life purpose and transitioning into it. Thanks again for listening. Until next time, don't forget, the world needs the Christ in you.